Hey there, and welcome to Play Noggin. I'm Julian, your brains player too. Well, the day has finally arrived, Noggin fans. We're finally doing the game that people have requested in the comments of almost every video we've made. It's time at last to talk about Duke Nukem Forever. I'm kidding, it's time for Subnautica. If you're into the indie game scene, you've probably encountered Subnautica. It's a vast, open-world survival game with an almost completely aquatic map that has a surprising amount of depth to it. You get it? The game's been in early access for some time, which means it's not finished yet, though you keep hearing promises that it's coming one day, much like this episode. So since it's unfinished, try to ignore the minor things like texture pop-ins, wall clippings, and this thing in the corner that says early access. You know what, let's just cover that with a happy little bush. Yeah, that's better. Once you get past the minor visual issues and focus on the big picture, you start to get overwhelmed with the world of Subnautica. It's vast and full of so many strange and wonderful creatures. From tiny glowing fish to giant leviathans, there are so many new species in this alive and functioning ecosystem that after a while I was jaded to their magnificence. And it made me realize, we take for granted that we have creatures on our very own Earth that are just as bizarre and beautiful as anything these game developers dreamed up, especially the ones that live in the deepest parts of our ocean. They glow or are see-through or grow to massive sizes too. Why do the animals that swim in the depths look so strange? To be fair to some of our deep sea friends, those that have swim bladders, that is, an organ that fills with gas to help them ascend and descend in the water, those guys get physically warped when brought to the surface. The lower pressure up here causes their swim bladders to expand and voila, you have a weird looking fish. Extreme deep water fish don't have swim bladders, but that doesn't mean they won't look disfigured at the surface. The infamous blobfish lives over a thousand meters deep, where the water pressure can be 120 times the pressure you or I experienced taking a dip at the surface. Down there, their gooey, fleshy bodies are actually packed together by the water itself, and they look like, well, a fish. But let's be honest, not all of these weirdos can use these convenient excuses. Some of them just look like terrifying aliens. Why is that? As it turns out, the environment a creature develops in has a lot to do with that creature's morphology, meaning the form and structure of an organism. And the deepest parts of the ocean have some very specific issues that its denizens have to overcome. First and foremost, the depths of the ocean are very, very dark, because light just runs out of steam as it tries to push through all that water. Water is good at absorbing electromagnetic radiation, what's known as attenuation. So after 200 meters, there's not enough light to support photosynthesis. This area is known as the twilight zone, or dysphotic zone if you want to be all sciencey about it. After a thousand meters, forget it, no light from the surface gets through at all, and it's a world of perpetual midnight. As a result, many creatures down in the deep had to develop crazy big eyes to capture every particle of light possible. They unfortunately didn't go the Disney princess route and end up looking all adorable for it. Instead, they look like this. Ah. Someday your prince will come, hatchet fish. You may be wondering why they have eyes at all if no surface light reaches them. That doesn't mean that there's no light, period. Like Beyonce, many deep sea creatures make their own shine, or they have bacteria who can do it for them, just like Beyonce. Either way, these deep sea creatures use a molecule called luciferin, which reacts with oxygen to give off light. Some deep sea animals, like our princess hatchetfish from earlier, use these lights to confuse predators. If you're tasty deep sea prey though, another strategy would be invisibility, either by being translucent or by being red. Remember how I said light doesn't penetrate water well? Well, red light has the lowest energy, so it penetrates the worst. Since there's no red light to reflect, red creatures are effectively invisible. Most creatures down there haven't even evolved to see red light. Some creatures though, like the stoplight loose jaw, have actually developed red bioluminescence that they use like a spotlight to illuminate red prey, while remaining invisible themselves. But why go out and get dinner when you can make it come to you? That's the philosophy of the anglerfish and Postmates. If you're a Pixar fan, you probably saw this monster in Finding Nemo. It's the one with the appendage growing out of its head with a bioluminescent light on the end. That organ is called an esca, and they can wave it about as a lure. When stupid, smaller fish come to check out the enticing glow and wander into the anglerfish's mouth, the angled inward teeth make it next to impossible for them to leave. That's another feature you'll notice on a lot of deep sea creatures, but nobody takes it to the extreme like the fangtooth. The fangtooth has 
has the largest teeth of any fish in the ocean in proportion to its body size. Living so deep in the ocean but without the benefit of giant eyes like other creatures means that the fang tooth is functionally almost blind. It's developed something called chemoreception to catch its prey. Essentially, it has to bump into something edible before it knows it's there. It needs these long, raked back teeth to make sure their meal doesn't slip away. I know they're horrifying, but they live very deep down, so next time you're out for a swim and feel something knock into your leg, it's probably not a fang tooth. Probably. At first glance, deep sea life can look hideous and horrifying, but after you start to think about the environment they're in and how they've adapted to it, they become sort of beautiful and marvelous. And there's a ton more out there we haven't even discovered yet. We've only explored 5 to 10% of the ocean, and we're finding new creatures every day. Things like the big red jellyfish, the pink meanie jellyfish, and the spaghetti squid. A plus on the naming, by the way, I love it. I personally can't wait to see what new wonders we uncover as we dive deeper into this vastly unexplored part of our planet. Maybe we'll even find the crashed remains of an alien ship and the remains of a pilot who had an unfortunate encounter with a sarcastic fringe head. You can't make this stuff up. Hey, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Any ideas for topics or games we should cover, just drop them in the comments. If you couldn't tell, I'm a bit of a marine bio nerd, so I'd love to direct you to our video about Splatoon 2 here, and take this chance to say that octopi is also an acceptable plural of octopus, before you go leaving that in the comments. And don't forget to keep on swimming. Playing. Playing. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, 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 swimming.